All right. Welcome to a new year. Um, same old fragments of silicon. At least last I checked. Like anyway, it's our first uh, broadcast of 2020. Like, and we begin with uh, fragments of silicon review session. Uh, three reviews up this week. Uh, the first of which is a game called The Park, which is about a gen about as generic of a name as you could get. Um, yeah, Googling this was fun. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Like, um, indeed, The Park really doesn't indicate what it is outside of, you know, you know like, um, the park in question is a theme park. It's actually called Atlantic Park, which would be a better title, I think. Mm -hmm. but once again, you wouldn't have to try very hard to get a better title out of this. Like, seriously. Indeed. <laughs> this is the kind of title that you come up when you have 30 seconds mm -hmm. and are about to ship the game. <laughs> like, anyway, um, uh, generic titles aside, the, the park is actually... Uh, connected to an MMORPG called The Secret World. You may or may not have heard of this. It, it's been going on for, what, the better part of a decade now? Something like that. Now, I, I just know it's been around for a good long while. Never touched it myself, but I've certainly known of it for a long time. Um, if you don't know what The Secret World is, and it's understandable if you don't, because... It's still a thing, but you know we're well past peak popularity and all that stuff. Uh, it's an MMORPG uh, centered around um, the occult, let's say, and scare really scary things, um, horror, terror of all. You know, it's a horror grab bag, let's say. You know. It's not just like Lovecraftian elements. It's you know more. You, know, you also got more movie monsters, um, and um, just all sorts of uh, you know horror references. Also, the secret world is part AR uh, alternative alternative reality game. Augmented reality. Yeah, it's got yeah some like interacting with stuff in real life components that honestly I still don't really know that much about on a kind of uh game weird and not the one we were paid to review or you know <laughs> given to review yeah. yeah true enough I mean I do know how they work it's um there are clues in the game that prompt you to you know reference things that kind of thing um I think I saw a video that summed up best. The The problem with this is once you're given access to Google, you lose. Mm -hmm. As, you know, you know what you can do? You can just look up the walkthrough to get the thing. Yeah, yeah mm. that, that's kind of a problem with ARGs in the modern era. Indeed. But, you know, um, that's and I all guess a side. note for housekeeping real quick. The Secret World Legends is free to play if you want to play that before this. Right. Uh, because so, and, uh, so, in, so the the ways in this game is not does not initially appear particularly specifically tied to it. The tie is specifically in the form that there are events in the Secret World that serve as like follow ups. Like the main character of this game appears in other things in the Secret World. And the secret world makes some of the things of this game that this game does not make super explicit well, uh, more, con more confirmed to be, like, accurate and shit. Well, here's the biggest tie in the park itself. Atlantic Park is an actual area in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a prequel to the, uh, you know, whatever events happen in the secret world. Right. Anyway, and... We were given the Switch version of the game because that recently came out around Halloween. Gotta love how PR uh, agencies work. We got approval like a few days before Christmas. Well done. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Which is why we're reviewing it, you know, here in early January of 2020. So, 
Anyway, it's still a fresh game by Nintendo Switch standards because this game actually came out on PC in 2015. So, mm -hmm. anyway, since it's a Switch review, over to the Galax for more details. So, yeah, if you didn't know this was a tie into a paranormal thing, uh, it doesn't really tell you a whole ton of it initially. It could very easily, for the most part, be, you know, just in your head fuckery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you play as a single mom who is arriving at Atlantic Park with her son, and uh, he or is leaving, and your son left his teddy bear inside or something. And he, you go up to ask if you can go in to look for it, and as you're doing that, your son runs in, and you follow him. And when you get in, the whole park is dilapidated and abandoned and shit. Uh, and you hear you 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 always have a yell for your son button. Jason. On, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, that's Cheryl. what it made me think of. Um, and when you do, he'll yell, and you'll get a visual pulse effect. It looks like distortion uh, that will tell you which way you need to go to get to the next thing. Uh, but basically, what happens is you just follow around the park it's it's a walking simulator there's no combat there's no like real choices or anything you walk around the park going from ride to ride and picking up picking up pieces of paper that have background information for the park and getting flashbacks to your horrible past and stuff uh, and uh, you find it around and then uh, there are some hints that the park is some kind of like Eldritch experiment and stuff, but honestly, when you're playing it, it's not entirely clear that like if everything's I, apparently everything that's going on is literally true, and the thing that was messed up was that everything looked normal at the beginning or something. But it's not super clear when you do that when you're playing it. It's just one of the things I came up when I was looking at looking it up afterwards. Mm -hmm. You run into a spooky monster that is sometimes looks like the circus ringmaster and sometimes looks like the uh, chipmunk fucking squirrel mascot of the park because <laughs> obviously. Um, and then at the end, you find your son and I think you like kill him or something. It's weird. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, it's spooky, and it's good if you're not in the mood for, like, I guess a good time. But it also had uh, a bit of a flaw to me is that the controls, uh, for as simple as they are, all you really do is walk around, inspect things and stuff. Uh, the movement is kind of clunky, and the uh, hot spot for actually being able to click on things when you're trying to inspect them is rather specific and a lot of things you can only click on once. So like if you pick up the, if you are trying to pick up the newspaper and your current, you can't get the thing lined up and then you get it lined up and you pick it up and then you step a little bit and then you actually double click, you'll put it down and not be able to pick it up again that I could find. So yeah, the controls are kind of janky and that's a, that was a significant downside for me. Mm hmm. You know, I bet that if this game had come out, like, say, within the past couple of years, it would be a VR experience. Probably. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. But, um, you know, once again, it it came out in 2015, where I'm trying to think, was the Oculus even a, a, a thing on the retail market at that point? I, it might have been. You know, I, I mean... It was definitely in development, and I know, like, hits were around, but, mm -hmm. you know, this is, like, the kind of thing that gets to be used to promote VR these days more mm -hmm. often. I mean, you know, traditional mm -hmm. walking simulators, which is a really weird term to use, but... Yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not usually horror this much, although mm -hmm. some of them are. You know, it's also a bit perplexing that we get the park on the Nintendo Switch, but, you know, the secret world isn't there, as far as I know. Mm. 
I mean, maybe this goes is, if it may be at some point or something. I really don't. I I could imagine it be um, you know if it's been updated to modern sensibilities because you know once again that's where you run into problems when you uh, you know when you try to bring older games to newer hardware. Like if we were still talking about like the. 2013 incarnation of like the secret world that would have problems you know with compatibility mm -hmm. but but anyway um so did this put you off kilter too much there galax because i know you have um hang-ups with scary games uh, well, I didn't play it in at all the recommended... It does that thing where, like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're really supposed to play this in a dark room with headphones on and with the the contrast adjusted so that you can barely see such and such a thing. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I did uh, not I, do that. Uh, some of the jump scary bits were still a little bit on the side for me, um, but it wasn't that bad in a lit room. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the headphones actually probably are recommended kind of uh because uh that might make it easier to tell where your son is yelling back to you from because sometimes i couldn't tell and had to like call repeatedly while looking in different directions yeah. mm. um i think another thing that's working against this game is it's um not its premise but its location uh you know in terms of horror abandoned and creepy amusement parks we've seen it a lot mm-hmm you know, it, it, it's not exactly um, a groundbreaking conceit, to say the least. I mean, fuck's sake, Scooby-Doo has made this a fucking staple. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but I, I guess it's still effective because, as I understand it, granted, you know, no one here is a real expert on the secret world, but, you know, the um, the park is a really popular location in that game. Which is probably one of the reasons why it got selected for this spin-off thing. Mm -hmm. I can see that. You know, granted, that's just our, inter you know, my interpretation of things. You know, if a dev wants to come onto the show and correct the record, we would be open to that. Anyway, um, so how did the game play on the Nintendo Switch with like uh, the Joy Cons and all that? Well, I'm currently experiencing with Joy-Con drift, but that I don't feel like that was the problem I was having. Uh, there was, I think, there might have been a little bit of rumble feedback, but mostly just it was it, the moving around is surprisingly clunky for how simple it seems like it should be. I thought. No, I'm like, okay, like I really don't have a comment on that because you know. It's like the one thing you do. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot of, like, play content in the game, really. Right. Now, does this thing make uh, take advantage of, like, the HD rumble? I, I honestly don't remember. I think it might have a little, but not, like, in one, a two, significant way. Yeah, not like one-two switch or something like that? Yeah. Um... To clarify, the jump scares aren't super jump jump scares. Usually, they're usually just like you're not in a super controlled thing, and the environment goes weird. And when it does that, I think the the, the buzzers were going off. But I was distracted by the you know gigantic menacing figure appearing or mm -hmm. lights flashing mm -hmm. and bumper cars going nuts. A typical day at the amusement park. <laughs> yeah, the only like actual in the only actual like inventory thing in the whole game is you have to get a flashlight before you can go in the house of horrors, which like fucking obviously is the last place you need to go to. Mm -hmm. Right. It's right in well, front of you as you're going in, but you like go in and you're like, no, it's too dark. I got to get my flashlight. I got to get a flashlight for this. So here's the ultimate question for this game: How many scary clowns did it have? <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't, not clowns per se, but fucking the park mascot and the ringmaster looking guy. Yeah. I, who may or may not be the same person, who may or may not be the same person who, like, took over the location and decided to build an amusement park here to fuel an immortality machine off of whatever the fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, um, let me see. No, um, yeah, it is a bit surprising that, you know, the amusement park doesn't have a creepy clown because, you know. Yeah, it's more, it was more like, I feel like it was like a theme park or something, maybe. Well, yeah, it's a theme park. I'm just saying, you know, in terms of overdone uh, horror tropes, uh, creepy clowns are uh, at the top. Almost like some people have fear clowns or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, the park mascot and the ringmaster, definitely clown adjacent. You know. Yeah, indeed. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, there's not a lot to actually discuss here in terms of like gameplay. Um, so, what about graphics and sound? You know, like, is there any music? Um, not much except when you're on the rides, you get the ride music. Because mm. you have to be able to yell and hear where the thing is coming from. Mm. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess we um, we can get to pricing, though. Bit of a thing here because okay, the Steam version costs twelve ninety nine. The Nintendo Switch version costs nine ninety nine. Wow. And <laughs> I can't. Here's the thing. I can't explain why this uh, price discrepancy exists because the publisher for the Nintendo Switch version is Funcom. You know, it's the same publisher as uh, the other version or versions. I'm not actually sure if this is out on the Xbox One or uh, PlayStation Four. I'd imagine. So just straight up Switch tax. No. Opposite no. Switch tax. No. Yeah, it's like no a Switch discount. Sorry. Yeah. I, I understandable just, like, mm -hmm. like you, you know the opposite to that happening is uncommon mm -hmm. not unprecedented we've we've encountered it on the show before but yeah the place you know the the switch version is a couple of bucks cheaper it's not that big of a difference but it could be a you know if you have like both systems um and it doesn't look like the the uh, uh, this game is on the PlayStation Four or the Xbox One yet. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm getting results for Conan Exiles. Fine. Or, hang on. Well, hang, hang on. No, I'm doing the the park. No, that was that's the wrong search and from you know really fucking generic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, no, no, it is on the other system. Sorry about that. And it's even on the Microsoft Store. Fun. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, well, uh, Galax, would you say this game is worth $10? To me, no. To someone who's interested in this kind of thing, I'd say that's on the high side of what I would pay, honestly. Like, the the quality, like, the visuals are nice enough, but the controls are clunky, and it's really not super long or anything. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I guess if you really like diving into people with the heads of people... She also narrates to herself while you're going between things to... Explain, give context for the horrible, probably hallucinations uh -huh. that you get while on the rides and shit. So, duly noted. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say it's not good. It's just um weird. <laughs> I'm guessing that oh, that's part of the point since. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a horror game, it's psychological horror. Yeah, this is a person who has is having breakdowns for reasons, and probably already had a breakdown, and you're just, you know, living through that. Mm -hmm. All right, then. So I think that'll about do it for our review of The Park. Be sure to tune in after the break as we will be reviewing Shovel Knight, King of Cards.